росіяни почали контрнаступальні дії. Це йде за нашим Russia appears to have launched its first major counterattack to drive Ukrainian forces out of the Kursk region more than a month after Ukraine began its surprise offensive. This is according to both Russian and Ukrainian sources. On Tuesday, ABC News of America reported that Russia already had some success retaking territory and driving a wedge into Ukrainian lines in Kursk. The Russian counterattack is focused on the western flank of Ukraine's incursion. John Helen, a researcher at the Blackbird Group, wrote that Russian troops had launched a push from west and north, driving a wedge behind Ukrainian troops towards Snagpost. <laughs> Russian military bloggers claim that Russian forces are now attacking the village of Ubukov, which would mean Russian troops could have advanced more than six miles on Tuesday alone. The situation can develop into a poorly controlled crisis, wrote a pro-Ukrainian military blogger by the name of Serhii Stenenko. He went further to say that Ukrainian forces lack adequate coordination in the area and are disorganized. On the 11th of September, Deep State commented that the situation on the Ukrainian group's left flank in the Kursk region worsened as the Russians began active assault operations. Analysts had recorded the movement of an armored column of Russians from Koronevo to Snagpost. The total number of enemy personnel is estimated at 36,000 or up to 60 battalions in the Kursk grouping. In addition, the Russians are actively using the mechanized component, which was not the case before. The enemy is now engaging equipment during each of our breakthrough attempts. This was all noted by Alexander Kovalensko, a military observer with the Information Resistance Group. Of Ukraine. So today I will cover the little that we can confirm about the Russian counteroffensive in the Kursk region, which started in the last three days. But given its recency, most of the information is still sparse and subject to further confirmation. I will also cover the current situation in the hottest and perhaps most important sector of the eastern front of Ukraine near the logistical supply hub of Pokrovsk which, by the way, is causing increasing alarm among military experts in Western media. So let's get into it. Russian Major General Aptu Aladonov, who commands special forces fighting in Kursk, said that Russian troops took back control of about 10 settlements in Kursk. Our situation is good. Our units have gone on the offensive, he said. Medusa reports that the units of the North Group of Troops for Russia have liberated the villages of Apanasovka, Biakovo, Vishnevka, Viktorovka, Nezapnoye, Gordivka, Irasnukaporsky, Opkovka, and Snagpost. On Thursday, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said Ukrainian forces were now, and I quote, steadily being squeezed out from Kursk and will be squeezed out completely. The size and scale and potential prospects of the September 11th Russian counterattack remains unclear and the situation is fluid as per the Institute for the Study of War. However, the projection is that Russia intends to bisect the Ukrainian salient, which means to extend into enemy territory and surround it on three sides before beginning a more organized and well-equipped effort to push Ukrainian forces out of Russian territory completely. The situation is getting worse for Ukraine because, as is reported by Ivan Stupak, a military expert and former SSU officer, in an interview with Ukrainian media, 
the armed forces of Ukraine reached its limit two to three weeks ago, he said. There was a lot of criticism on the topic of Kursk, with people asking how we were making a big thing. There were his words. He said that during the first two weeks, Ukraine was making a big impact, but the Russians, he said, have gathered far more troops than we have in that area. And this significant gathering of Russian troops and armor in the region of Kursk has caused some consternation among the Ukrainian media. Oleksiy Hetman, a Ukrainian National Guard Reserve Major, told Ukrainian media that there is a chance that Ukraine may have to retreat from Kursk. His words from the interview were as follows. The question arises as to where the Russians get their heavy equipment from. From the north, there is the Sem River, where bridges were blown up. We have repeatedly heard from our military and political leadership that it was a raid. That is, they started using the word raid. A raid, he said, means that military units enter the territory and then leave the city. A raid is a movement back and forth without delay, as explained by Hetman. According to the Major, it is likely that the Ukrainian Armed Forces operation in Kursk was aimed at pulling back Russian troops. Therefore, he said, I am not sure that we will, as they say, stick our necks out. If the Russians concentrate a large amount of manpower and equipment there, he said, it is likely that we will have to retreat to our territories, said Mr. Hetman. Meanwhile, in the east, as of the 7th of September, the Russians were still focusing on the shift in their offensive from Pokrovsk toward Zelidovi. Apparently, however, this city wasn't the primary target of the Russian offensive. Last week, earlier in September, Russian troops had captured the village of Kalevka and the large Russian group found itself in the rear of Ukrainian troops defending the ledge far to the east. At the center of the salient is a powerful fortified area at a dominant elevation over the entire area near the village of Novelsky. Although the Ministry of the Russian Defense reported on the capture of Novelsky back in March, the armed forces of Ukraine still control the outskirts and the dominant heights. The surroundings of this village are defended by the 59th Mechanized Brigade of the UAF who controls the donetsk pokrovsk Highway with fire, where supply vehicles and armored Russian vehicles are regularly hit. Control over the road will give the Russian command the opportunity to more effectively supply forces near Pokrovsk and Seligovy. Further, Novelsky's encirclement is hardly possible, reports Medusa as the pace of the Russian offensive in this area is still slow and affords units of the armed forces of Ukraine time to leave the salient at any time. Currently, there are no indications that the units of the 59th Brigade of Ukraine are leaving the Novelsky area. Now as to the salient created by the Russians to the south of Prokhorsk that I reported on in my last video, the latest reports say that the Ukrainian defense forces in the area have managed to hold onto the outskirts of the village of Kalit Senivka. However, Ukrainian media admits that the Russians are likely to soon break through Ukrainian defenses and advance along the left bank of the Vovcha River, storming the villages of Zelene, Pershi, and Juhi, which it admits also cannot be held for long. At the same time, Russian units are gradually completing the occupation of Krasnohorovka and moving towards their formation heading for Hernik. Another Russian unit has crossed the Lozova River and is trying to break into Ukrainian defenses, but the advance is just over a kilometer. Thus, the position is that the several thousand strong contingents of the Ukrainian armed forces holding the defense on the Krasnohorovka, Nevelsky, Halitsenivka front line is at great risk of being trapped. The only way out is the bridge over the Vobcha River in the village of Kurakivka. It is likely that in the near future, Ukrainian troops will make a controlled withdrawal from this trap to avoid being blocked. In the Battle of Selidovi, 
The Ukrainian armed forces managed to retain all their positions and prevent the Russians from entering the city. At the same time, the Russians managed to break through to the rear on the left flank of the semi-surrounded village of Marinivka, where Ukrainian defense forces held the Russians back for two weeks. Therefore, Ukrainian media reports that it is likely that Ukrainian soldiers will be forced to retreat from their positions. The Ukrainians attempted a counterattack on Novohrodovka, but unfortunately for them, Ukrainian media reports that it did not yield any tangible results, while the Russians were able to advance to the west of the city. Russia attempts to enter the villages of Krasny and Krutiya were, however, unsuccessful for the Russians. In Hrodovka, the Russians occupied only two streets in a week. However, they managed to enter Novotoretsky, which will eventually increase the pressure on Hrodovka from the north. Nevertheless, Ukrainian media views that the slowdown in the overall pace of the Russian offenses demonstrates that they do not have enough reserves to quickly throw into battle and speed up the fulfillment of their tasks. As of the 12th of September, an officer of the 59th Detached Motorized Infantry Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Mr. Yavik Hanzuik, noted as follows, The situation in the Pokrovsk sector is extremely difficult. The enemy started the assaults at 6 a.m. using the latest heavy armored vehicles including BMP-3, tanks, and airborne combat vehicles. During the first assault, the enemy used 20 pieces of equipment, then 11. The fighting is currently ongoing. The Ukrainian officer believes that the Russians want to approach Pokrovsk from the flanks, in particular from Minohad and Selidovi. In the meantime, the Russians have cut off the water supply to Pokrovsk, and it is reported that currently it is impossible to restore its operation. Lastly, further to the south of Donetsk, a perilous situation is developing for the Ukrainian armed forces near Vulhada. Ukrainian media espresso reports that the encirclement around Vulhada has tightened further. Russian forces have captured two key positions north of the city, the soil heap of mine number one and the village of Vodian, where Ukrainian forces had well fortified positions. Thanks to the soil heap, located just 2.5 kilometers from the city's northern outskirts, Russian forces gained a height advantage, allowing them to control the movement of Ukrainian troops in Vulhara. To completely cut off logistics, the Russians need to break through another 5.5 kilometers of defenses and reach the road from Kurakovi via Bohoya Blenka. The Russians are speeding up operations in this area, using up a significant amount of their armored vehicles, knowing this might be their only chance to give Putin something significant for his birthday, the article reports. The number of attacks has risen from 100 to 300 in two weeks. However, the Ukrainian Defense Forces artillery is currently successfully halting all mechanized assaults. From the south, after the capture of Preshitivka, during another unsuccessful rotation by the Ukrainian Armed Forces, the Russians were unable to advance further toward Zolotania or cross the Kashlak River to outflank the Vulada defenders.